Have you been thinking about learning how to code to build your own mobile application, but not sure which programming language you should learn? Hello, my name is Daniel Hindi, and today we're going to explain the most popular languages and frameworks to build your next mobile app. Early on, you only had two options, one for iOS and one for Android. Now we have a wide array of languages, tools, frameworks that we could use to build mobile applications. But today I'm going to focus on the ones that allow you to code within them. So I'm going to skip the cookie cutter type of mobile app builders out there. So the most common topic that you hear when discussing mobile app development are the differences between native apps and hybrid apps. Now, native apps are the applications built specifically for that particular operating system. Meaning, if you wanted an app for both iOS and Android, you would have to build specifically for iOS and specifically for Android. Now, this has some pros and cons to it. Now, for Apple, you can use Objective-C or Swift. Objective-C was the first language Apple supported to develop mobile applications on their platform. However, it's very heavily encouraged to go with Swift for any modern applications built for Apple. On the Android level, it started with Java, now Android Studio, which is a version of Java, a flavor of Java, if you will, that allows you to build for Android mobile applications. Like I said, native app development has pros and cons. The pros are you have the most control over the device and low level code for new cutting edge technologies that are added onto the device. And they're bottom line, the fastest in execution. The cons are they are the slowest to develop and most costly. So not only does it take more time and time equals money, it also takes the highest skilled type of developer and specialized de developer to build for iOS and Android. So the barrier to entry is very high. Next up are hybrid apps. Now these are the applications developed once, but are meant for multiple platforms. Most commonly, you develop once and it works for iOS and Android, and some of them also extend their functionality to PWAs, progressive web apps, for those moving into the more web-friendly environments. Now most hybrid applications are developed using JavaScript and various frameworks attached to that language. Some like Xamarin use C Sharp, and there's some low code type alternatives like OutSystems and Kony that have a, a, an SDK that can be used with different languages, not just one, and have a different flavor of them. But the most popular are the JavaScript based frameworks. Going from the Cordova slash PhoneGap type frameworks to React Native, and Accelerator's Titanium. Google also has some niche builders called Dart and Flutter. Now React Native and Accelerator use JavaScript to communicate with pre-built functionality that is native on their framework that allows you to manipulate the UI, collect and retrieve data so that you can present it to the user. So basically means you're heavily relying on JavaScript to manipulate native components. So the pros for developing this way is that you're using something known like JavaScript to manipulate something native. So it allows you to access native functionality directly from JavaScript. The cons are it doesn't tap into things like HTML and CSS, which are web technologies that generally are used with anybody developing in JavaScript so that you can manipulate your own user interface freely. So the barrier to entry is around a medium level. Now the Cordova slash PhoneGap and Ionic type frameworks, which are all really built on top of Cordova, are hybrid applications that are built porting over a web experience into a native experience. What does that mean? It means it allows you to develop just like you would a website. So if you're a web developer, this feels exactly like home for you using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and that web environment is ported over natively to iOS and Android. The pros here, it's a low barrier to entry. Anybody with a web background can easily come in and start developing, and the learning curve is very sharp, so it's easy to learn. The cons are you're giving up a little bit of frame rate, so if you're developing a high frame rate game, augmented reality, things like that, this solution is probably not the best solution for you. So all the hybrid frameworks that I spoke about alongside native languages to build mobile applications have something in common. They all have to be built from scratch and are missing a major component. 
Anybody who's developed a mobile application before understands mobile application is only a portion of the entire environment or the entire solution. You need a massive MBAS, mobile backend as a service, to host your data, to host your user profiles, to compile analytics, to send push notifications. These are all servers living in the cloud that you still need to develop as well to support your application. Unless your application is a calculator, you generally need some sort of user authentication, database, CMS, and so on. In comes BuildFire.js. This framework allows you to build using the web technologies you would with hybrid applications, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and it allows you to build on top of an existing platform. Now that platform has all your typical functionality that most apps needs. Login, reset password, access to GPS, uh, access to a database, a CMS, and so on. So you only need to build what is unique to your application. It comes with a massive MBAS, a mobile backend as a service, with CMSs, databases, analytic servers, push notification servers, authentication servers, API gateways, and many, many more. All this is bundled in an open source environment that allows people to constantly add new features to the platform that you can integrate into your app without the worry of security problems as well as licensing. And when all is said and done, there's a backend control panel that you have access to where you could push out data and updates to your application over the air without dealing with all the publishing headaches. And because it's a platform, anything new coming in for iOS or Android, any new features, any new compliance, any new regulations, policy, and so on, is constantly updated on the platform so you don't have to worry about making sure that your app stays compliant. Now, as a final note, all the options listed are good, valid options. They're completely fine. All of them have their pros and cons. Now, you just need to analyze the goals that you have for your application and see where your time is best served and where it's most lasting, where that you could put in the effort into learning a particular framework or a language and then make sure you can go to market quickest with the best app possible. So with that being said, I hope this video gave you the information you need and let's go build great things together. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content.